Assessing Normal Norwegians. This is a, um, a One School for All lecture by me, Andrew Thomas, at Esfor University College for my wonderful One School for All students that I want to watch um, by Tuesday the 25th of September next week. So we're going to talk um, briefly about the um, assessment for learning revolution that's happened in Norway in the past few years. Uh, essentially, what is assessment for learning? Those of you who have read the book already um, will, um, will know that assessment for learning has... Um, about two main emphases. One is that teachers need to know what pupils can and can't do in order to um, adapt their um, educational uh, to their educational needs. And secondly, pupils need to know what is good and bad about their work so that they're able to so they're open to having their mistakes corrected, so that they are they have this learnable humility. And so they, um, on the other hand, don't throw the baby out of, with the bathwater when they receive um, assessment from their teachers. Um, so they don't, uh, or when they don't receive it, so they know what's so good about it. Um, and when they want to change, that they don't change the good stuff, they only change the bad stuff. For our purposes, um, this is all about knowledge about the pupil um, as a way of integrating them into an educational system. Uh, we could say, look at it as um, a, the plague model with a feedback loop. And the feedback loop um, allows the student to know anything uh, they need to know about this assessment. So it's knowledge about the pupil, but the student gaining that knowledge about themselves. So it's essentially something to do with self-knowledge. Now let's move on because um, assessment for learning is, a, is actually an international movement. Um, it's been directly translated into Norwegian as well um, as, uh, as a government initiative, but it's essentially based on um, an article from the, um, 1998 by Black and Willem um, called Inside the Black Box. I guess you know what a black box is, yeah? It's, um, the idea is um, how do you know whether there's a human inside a black box when all you know is what's, what goes into that black box and what comes out of that? How do you tell whether there's a human inside or a computer inside? It's an image of um, of behaviorism. Um, we know that if, um, um, just like if you um, are about to feed a dog, then the dog's mouth waters. Um, so similarly, we know that if you give a student a test, then they will react in a certain way. Um, the idea that um, Black and William tried uh, tried to get across was, okay, we know we know a great deal about results. Why don't we assess these results? Why don't we work out what what kind of information, um, what kind of ac activities give most good results? Um, when you, what kind of education can you put into the the black box of the pupil so you get um, the desirable results out of it on the other side? And and their and, and their finding was um, that it's good assessment that makes a massive difference. Assessment practices explain most achievement in school. Um, and some, and then 10 years later, um, John Hattie wrote the book Visible Learning, which was a, a famous book going through 800 meta-analyses, literally data from thousands, no, from millions of children. Um, and he found something similar that of all the things that you can do um, in a classroom, the, um, the, the one activity that explains most differences between pupils is the extent there is their access to, to high quality assessment practices. So that's essentially the um, uh, the basis, and we can talk about what qualifies what um, qualifies as high quality and low quality assessment practices later. But essentially, this is all based on on good quality research. Um, the Norwegian government then um, read these books, or at least uh, read the first book, um, and um, and worked out and, and decided that there's something um, that needs to be done about this. Here is here seems to be a simple. Um, identifiable practice that we can do something about in the Norwegian law and um, and as a result get better educated pupils. It seems um, a no-brainer. Um, notice that I've put these three branches of government up the, um, at the top here because um, this is um, because the reform that took place took in the um, took place in the executive arm, which is say the regulations of law. It wasn't a, um, there wasn't so much legal um, resolution, but there was a, um, a a difference in the the regulations, um, which is uh, technically the executive branch. Essentially, telling us this is what teachers have to do when they um, when they are teaching as a general overhaul of assessment practices so that the students actually have right to particular kinds of assessment practices. And the one thing that's unique with the Norwegian um, system is that, or at least that's special about the Norwegian system, is that pupils have got access, have got a right to um, assessment practices throughout their life, throughout their educational life. Um, um, but um, they don't get a, 
a mark until their last three years of secondary school. Um, there were marks all the way through high school, but only the last three years of the of the ten year secondary school, uh, ten year basic school training. Um, do they get marks? So essentially, their access to um, to assessment is assessment without a mark. Um, so that was the that was the main change. And then, in addition to this regulational change, there was a, a change of um, teaching teaching reform. Basically, teachers go back to the drawing board and, and learn how to um, assess well. And there was a massive teacher education um, initiative from 2007 right up to the present day, and they're just reviewing it now. Notice that with special needs education, there is a focus on assessment. The assessment has to take place um, in order to know what to do. With the assessment for learning assist, uh, situation, there is this feedback loop that I told you about, which is to say that it's not just that um, assessment needs to take place, but the students need to know about their assessment. So their the emphasis is upon communicating that assessment and using that assessment. So it's, it's similarly, like I say, it's knowledge about the pupil all the way, um, but it's communicating that um, which is the added difference when we're talking about assessment for learning. And of course, assessment for learning applies to absolutely everybody. It's not just the special needs pupils. So this is a universal right. The four principles that steer the, um, ed the assessment practices um, are firstly that pupils and apprentices must understand what, are, what they are learning and what is expected of them. Um, this is both a legal and a pedagogical reason. Um, you shouldn't, it's unfair to have this uh, put out a test and only afterwards explain to the pupils what you wanted them to do. If you want them to do something, then your explanation is, needs to be sufficient before you um, set them um, going doing stuff. Secondly, they must get feedback that tells them about the quality of their work. So there's no niceness, no, nothing about this. Oh, I want you to know that you're a beautiful, unique snowflake. Um, they need to know what, how good their work is. And they must get advice on improvement. There's no point in telling them exactly what needs to be done if they, um, uh, unless you actually tell them about the next step, the specific step. Unless they know about the step they have to do now, there's no point in telling them what they need to do, um, you know, one week down the line uh, once they've already achieved that. And similarly, similarly, they must be involved in their own um, learning, including by assessing their own work and development. And this is a way of um, of catching them before they hand in a work. If they can assess their own work, then they can also improve it. So those are the four principles, and I've translated these from the um, from the assessment for learning website, which you can find there. So what we've got is a, a legal organisational development in um, Norwegian schooling. Um, it it read the research. It did what the research said. Uh, there's two things to note. It's and one thing is it's just like special needs education on most points, except it's universal. Um, so it, which is to say, it's the plague um, the plague model is not meant to be for specific categories of unusual people. It's for it's put for the entire population. Similarly, um, the emphasis is on um, self-regulation. Um, pupils need to know um, how to change their own education. Now, self-regulation self is something we all need to know in order to be adults and live in the adult world. We all need to know how to change our life. Um, but self-regulation in school has the added advantage of students regulate their own learning when the, um, so the teachers don't always and don't have to in the same way. So it's great for um, to have self-regulated um, learners in adult life, but it's even better to have self-regulated learners at school because it's cheaper.